Hey, what up? It's Crash, and obviously, issue four was pretty much just released, and I'm gonna be telling you basically just my theories of what happened in the story, and all in all, where it leads us off. Where does Kratos actually go in the end? So obviously, it begins with Kratos waking up again in this dream-like or this different space where it seems only gods can reside and seeming to be like the universe because you can see those stars or just you know things glowing in the background of them and we actually see a man well i'm pretty sure it's it's thoth or maybe like a i don't know just another god as well and the both of them talk about destiny what's predicted what is written prophesized and they keep talking about it so kratos obviously looks at his blades you know, he doesn't want to do this. And he, like, you feel bad for him. Like, you do. The fact that he's been through all of this and he's still having to do things that he doesn't want to do. And he can't help it either because obviously he tries. But in the end, it's the same thing. He ends up doing it again and again. So they keep constantly talking about destiny, destiny, your purpose, what's prophesied, what is written. And so Thoth, the Tibis, the monkey or the baboon, I'm not really sure what the animal's called. <clears throat> they also talk about destiny, what was written. And from there, Kratos fights the beast. He ends up killing him. And he realizes like in the moment, he's angry. And it feels maybe good, even a little bit. But once that moment is over, those thoughts, those things that he's done in the past, they just come back in his head. The fact that he couldn't control his rage, he thinks about it in his mind again and again. Each time that he does get angry, each time that he does his control, each time that he does go into his Spartan rage. And yeah, you, you just feel like really bad for him. He says that it's his curse. Blood and fury is his curse. And the world is a prison that he can't escape his own hell. So once again, like, it makes you feel bad for him. The fact that he's wanted to die, that he tried killing himself with the Blade of Olympus because he knew that was the only way because the Blade of Olympus has the power to kill a god and it didn't. And he wanted to get rid of the blades, but he couldn't. And now he's like, yeah, this is, this is prison. This is hell. The fact that I'll never be able to see my wife and daughter again man and then from there he pretty much goes back into this state where the gods are he i guess passes out or faints due to exhaustion or something among those lines and thoth says that he fulfilled his purpose and that he wishes good fortune on the path that he will go on and he has a sense that he will need it obviously foreshadowing a little bit of once he gets to Scandinavia and you know maybe potentially fighting Baldur he's already feeling like you're gonna have a big role to the next place that you're going to go so that's already you know a little bit of foreshadowing and he says trapped in a cage of my own darkest emotions obviously rage being the most prevalent one anger pretty much anything that is negative you know that that's him not once in his comic was he happy smiling laughing or even like neutral every single page in the comics he was just dealing with what he's done and not really ever finding peace and he's pretty much never going to find peace you know because well, again that just makes you feel sad even he even cried like if you look at one of the pages when he was lying down on the floor he was crying a tear was coming out of his eye like that's how much it got to him the fact that he just he, he can't as much as he wants to get away from all of this he just can't no matter what no matter what and they say that it is written it is written but they never mention who wrote it and it makes me think okay what if because i'm taking this from zevnir to the higher existence so obviously athena is in the higher existence but the thing is is what if there is 
the higher existence now it's not a person it's not anything it is just a thing and it is the higher existence seemingly just like a, a power and it's independent it has no brain it's just the higher existence and it determines anything and everything it's even above above higher existence athena because it is the literal higher existence there is nothing else above it and it just kind of independently thinks and does things by itself and actually what's kind of interesting is as of right now or actually a while ago i was thinking that there were two different athenas obviously the one that was stone and then the one in human form and i kind of believe a little bit that the reason athena showed herself in her human form or maybe why the other version of athena that's in human form or you know in her physical body decided to show herself is because then that would i guess maybe give her a little bit more of a manipulative power towards Kratos to actually make him do what she wanted him to do which is obviously you know messed up and from there you know he, he says i'm trapped in my darkest emotions reliving my worst nightmares in my mind over and over and it, just, it ends on such like uh that you feel so sorry for him i i, I just can't stress it enough like reading it because i was reading it slowly man once I got to that last page, I was like, damn. That this is what it's like. This is what it is for him. He has rage. He's always angry, upset, sad. He, he always has negative emotions attached to himself that he'll pretty much never get rid of. Up until he gets to Scandinavia and... We still do get known that he has those visions or those dreams where he constantly goes through them again and again of murdering his whole family each and every single time he goes to bed. And now he pretty much like accepts it. Instead of throwing the blades away, putting them down and walking away, he picks them up and he walks away with them. But, you know, he says, damn himself, damn himself to hell. And from there, I presume, he just, he walks, walks, walks. And then that's when uh, the hooded woman with the three wolves appears. So if I were to guess, I'd say like the destiny of Kratos in the land of the pharaohs is, has pretty much been complete for now. So he's not going back to Egypt. There is still the possibility that he could go back to Greece. I don't know why, but that's obviously the whole thing. We don't know why, which would make us like want to become way more curious. But who knows? Maybe in the future, in the next upcoming game of God of War, you know, God of War Ragnarok, that's when he'll actually go back to Greece. So that might even be foreshadowing up until then. So who knows? Who knows? And I'm guessing... You know, on the last panel, that's him traveling for like maybe two months, I'd say. And he's traveling more and more. And then, yeah, like I said, that's when he meets the hooded woman with the three wolves. He takes out his blades. He looks at the wolves. He sees the woman. Or he doesn't see the woman yet. He's slashing his blades. The fire is keeping the wolves away. And then he sees the woman and Kratos says, who are you? And then from there, the woman gives a hand signal. The wolves bite, fight Kratos. And eventually he just gets completely overpowered. And one of them mauls one of his legs. And from there, he pretty much loses consciousness due to the amount of pain he's taken. And by the time he wakes up, he's in Midgard. He's in Scandinavia. And he just gets up. He doesn't really know where he is, obviously, and he just begins to walk again. And then who knows, maybe he stumbles across Faye or just uh, of another village or something like that. That's going to be pretty interesting. Like if they do make uh, another comic series or a video game of seeing a prequel of how he met Faye or, you know, obviously how he got from Egypt to Scandinavia, that'd be very very good to know all in all this is what i think if you haven't seen the 
God of War Fallen God issue number four comic check down below in the comments or at the end of the video I'm also going to be putting all the comics together one through four hopefully you enjoyed this video talk to you later when I came to these shores I chose to live as a man but the truth is I was born a god and so were you